like I say, you guys, it's too late. And, and at this at this point, we're just exploring. So, left to die. National Geographic. Let's see what this one is about. Of course, of course you guys put your opinions down below. More, more videos you guys want me to do. And we'll explore more. But I see through Fairy Homegirl's eyes. Left to die. It looks like they're climbing mountains. Okay, so this one looks interesting. Scuba cave diving, the big black last dive of David Shaw. 21. 43. I don't know what that means. This is my first time ever. Cave diving? I don't know. What, what is that? I, so, in a cave, it's just not my thing. Of course, you guys put your opinions down below to each of its own. I love people that, like, travels the world and can do that and... Is it about deep cave diving that holds such a fatal attraction? For Dave Shaw, it was a challenge he could not turn away from. Diving 271 meters below the surface of Busmanskhat Cave, one of the world's deepest freshwater diving holes. And it was while setting a world record there last year that he discovered the body of another diver, D'Andrea, who died 10 years ago. And so Shaw returned to recover the body. The mission was successful, but ultimately it cost him his life. Producer Charlene Stanley brings you his story right from when it first began. And tonight we bring you exclusive, never before seen footage. Yeah, that, the real footage? Also coming to his watery grave. 28 October 2004. 50-year-old Australian diver Dave Shaw sets a new world record. Using a rebreather system, he has gone 271 meters down to the bottom of Busman's hut in the Northern Cape. And he brings news from the deep. He has found the body of Dion Dreyer, a young diver who drowned here 10 years ago. It wasn't very steep. And, uh... When I saw the body over on to my left, I thought, oh, that's the end of going deep. <laughs> so, just tied my line to it. And by then I was, well, we won't discuss that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I just left my line. Mm. I, I would guess that the body is between 15 and 20 metres from the line. Yeah, I Shaw makes a promise to Dreyer's parents. When I saw the body, I He'll yeah. bring them their son's body. <laughs> He's going back down. for life. Only 20 years old, he chased all his boyhood dreams. He was a motor racer, combat shooter and a cave diver. He died after presumably suffering a deep water blackout during a dive at Busman's hut. Ten years later, his parents are still struggling to come to terms with his death. They gladly accept Dave Shaw's offer. I mean, a lot of people say, what do you want with it? It's a bag of bones. To me, it's not a bag of bones. It's my son. I don't care what's inside that wetsuit. To me, that's not mm -hmm. important. It's my son. Deepcave.com is the personal website of Dave Shaw. An airline pilot. But his true passion cave diving. The site tells the story of a technical diving expert, a dedicated explorer, a man who won't back down from a challenge. I might be wrong, but I think he's the only guy on the planet at this stage with the true ability to do the recovery. Yeah, great to see you. Yeah. Great to see you. My wife, yeah, yeah. lovely to see you. How was the trip? Have a good great. trip, did you? Yes. Yeah. 
Perfect, and yours? I find myself back in this beautiful location in January 2005 um, after to repeat the world record dive in an attempt to recover DeAndrea's body so that the Drea family can finally put closure to this very sad chapter in their lives. The recovery attempt is a massive operation. The help of police divers and the defence force have been called in. Police divers, you've got ten minutes. That means you've got seven. It takes days to prepare the site. Specialised medics are on standby. When I first discovered him, I tried to lift him up, but found that uh, he was very firmly stuck in the mud. Well, not actually his body, but his tanks that were on his back, they were in the mud. So the first thing I have to do when I reach him is um, remove him from his tanks. When I place him into uh, a body bag, what we've done is uh, designed a body bag. This is it here, and I'll be um, taking this down with me and feeding Dion into the body bag. You'll notice that there's some netting at the bottom. The reason for the netting is so that any flow of water goes straight through the bag and doesn't create a, a sea anchor effect and make, make it difficult for me to uh, bring him back to the surface. 13 minutes later. Yeah. Okay, that's good, that's good. A dive plan coordinates Shaw and his support divers' actions down to the last second. Long-time friend and highly qualified diving instructor Don Shirley helps with the planning. If anyone falls out of that. A camera in a specially designed underwater housing will be mounted on Shaw's headgear. Um, yes, it's, uh, it'll be a world first getting footage from this sort of depth, so uh, um, it will be interesting to see if it works or not. Yeah. The big day dawns. will be fast. Following a pre-installed drop line, he should reach the bottom of the cave within 13 oh. minutes. Ah. He'll then follow the thin cave line he had previously attached to Dreyer's body. He has five minutes to put the body into the body bag. Following the cave line again, he'll move back to the drop line with Dreyer's body. He'll then slowly make his way up, handing the body to Don Shirley, who will be waiting at 220 metres. Shirley will pass the body on to other divers waiting at different levels. Meanwhile, Shaw will continue to slowly ascend, resting and changing gases along the way to prevent getting decompression sickness. Support divers will meet him at different depths. They'll bring him food and liquids and check his condition. About 12 hours after entering the water, he'll be back on the surface. That was the plan. An hour and a half into the dive, and an ominous message reaches the surface. You've read the slate? Yes. OK. No dawn or day. Um, Shaw and Shirley have failed to meet the support divers, waiting for them roughly halfway to the bottom. It turns out that when Shaw did not meet him at 220 metres as planned, Shirley had gone down to look for him. But at 250 metres, he encountered problems. Then, another message. Shirley had seen a light in the distance. It wasn't coming up. He had done what he could to get to shore. Now an important diving rule applied. Look after yourself first. Don's computer's 
stuffed completely. The focus shifts to Don Shirley. He's showing signs of vertigo and has started vomiting underwater. Doc says if he's breathing, don't bring him up straight away. We need to make a decision. If he's not breathing, then bring him up. Twelve and a half hours after entering the water, he's brought to the surface. Disorientated and weak, but alive. You happy with that? He's stabilized and immediately taken to a decompression chamber. Today's wish was to um, to stay, if he died diving, to stay where he was. And um, I feel that you know, Dave should stay where he is. Uh, I'm sure he would like the camera to come back so we could see what were the last moments and the circumstances of it. But I think we should leave his body where it is. I also, I also have to accept because I've got no choice. But if I would still, it's not what I want. later it's time for final goodbyes have a good rest my mate and time to pack up the thick shot line that runs all the way to the bottom is pulled up it's then that they make a startling discovery In what seems like the greatest coincidence, both bodies are recovered. A mere 20 meters from the surface, Dave was stuck against the ceiling and Dion was um, dangling. Yeah. Actually, the, the, the cave line, it's a cave reel that we use, the line um, was caught up in Dion's body, all over his body, and Dave's torch caught the line. And that was the only thing holding. What is the coincidence of that? Right. As the drop line was pulled up, the two bodies came with. The ten-year-old corpse of Dion Dreyer trailing behind Shaw. In the end, he did bring Dreyer up. He had kept his promise. He honestly did. He found the body, made a promise, went down there. Although, you know, he didn't plan on dying, but that's the chances he took, too. Ooh. fashioned rusty twin pack cylinders Dave Shaw's sophisticated rebreather but all eyes are on one piece of equipment Shaw's camera still perfectly intact we've actually viewed the tape in every possible way that you could actually think uh, we've been through it in real time in slow time freeze frame backwards and forwards and really interpreted what exactly went on The footage shows Shaw shaking hands with diving buddy Don Shirley for the last time. As he submerges, the clock starts ticking. Don Shirley describes what happens underwater. OK, now Dave's going to move over to the entrance of the cave. You see how clear the water is already. The sounds you're hearing there are the divers below that's doing the filming. Dave's getting ready to go down now. Uh, 
Okay, the descent has begun. Now moving through the restriction, just checking that everything's okay with the computer. You see part of the cave there as we're moving through. This is the oxygen hanging at six meters. It's past, getting past all the clutter that's there. There's our cameraman. Everything's going good. We're moving quickly. Final check. Everything's good. Moving down now. Soon be coming to the roof. Just passing 22 meters. Everything going good. Okay, we're on the roof. You can see a bit of rock coming down from the roof there. Now we're in the clear. Now we're descending on the line. Running down the line quickly. Everything's going good. Final check. PPO2s are good. Moving down the line. My oxygen levels are right. My computers are good. Passing some of the stage cylinders. Lots of cylinders on this line. Dave's moving down very quickly now. He's helping himself go down. Running the line very quickly down. Breathing's good. Approach it. There we are on the bottom now, moving along. There's the big thick line from the down line. Okay, now we're coming to the small line which goes off to the body. Okay, Dave's working hard now. He's trying to save as much time as he can. And there we have Werner's dolphin. There's a dolphin that was put in the roof uh, as a joke to Werner. Now it's deflated and gone all the way back down to the bottom. Looking, everything's good. Ten minutes into the dive, very quick descent. Everything's great. Now, Dave's working hard. This is, he's jogging. It's like jogging on the surface. So he's actually breathing quite heavily at 270 meters. See how clear everything is. Nice bright light shining, can see everything happening. Right, getting ready uh, for the, the body. Okay. Dave will be able to see Dion now. There's Dion's legs. All right, we're still on plan. Everything is going good. We're working hard. Undo the bag and put it over the legs. Everything's good. Checking, everything's right. Breathing heavily, still jogging, still jogging. Okay, bit of silt, I'd expect that. Okay, undoing the bag and, and trying to slide it up the legs. Now, things are not to plan because the body is loose, it's not in the, uh, it's no longer stuck in the mud, everything is loose, the body's moving around with its cylinders. Dave's working hard trying to work out what to do next, he's still checking, he's still checking all the gauges, he's breathing heavy, he's working hard. Now this line is just getting everywhere because this body is floating, it's not stuck, everything's moving. Right. Light gets caught on the line there. Moving out the way. Still got a nice bright light. Moving up. Now, we can't put the, the bag over, so it's a case of just untangling the cylinders from the, uh, the line here. You see, rushing, trying to get these scissors to cut. Because we were going to cut it out of the um, cylinders, but now everything is loose. This is a very sloping bottom, so Dave slipped here. Again, now he's coming back to the body. Everything just And you can up. see he's checking, making sure everything's right with his, with his time. Time's getting short now. The time is nearly to the point where he needs to leave. Okay, good check. All the time checking, making sure he's okay, working at the same time. There's the line. 
This is a line we were worried about being loose, and there it is loose. Mm. Okay. We've now come to the end of our time now, and it's, it's time to leave. Dave's decided he's going to leave. Uh, all on plan, everything's right. He's still working hard, everything's right. He's leaving. Okay, all on time, working hard. Quick check, make sure his gauges are right. Something seems to be stopping him now. And he's caught in the line. Okay. He's working hard trying to untangle himself and see the bag. Oh, okay, there he goes, he's there. moving on again. Now, he's breathing very hard. It's getting quite difficult to do things. Good check on the gauge. Now, Dave's breathing would be getting quite heavy as he's trying to work his way out. And slowly, Dave would start to become incoherent and then uh, then he would stop. But he was still moving out and he was still working right, right up to the end. And what he found was he got caught up in the line. He was moving away, the body and everything was actually towing behind him and he, was, he had to then try and untangle himself uh, from that in a very restricted light position with a, uh, a very, uh, very high sort of breathing rate. And he basically succumbed to all the pressures that you've got at that sort of time. And uh, his breathing slowly faded and, and Dave passed away. He honestly did keep the promise to the family. I mean, he couldn't get the body. He thought he couldn't get the body. But God said, uh-uh, you will not die for nothing. And he brought both of their bodies back up. Like, how amazing is that? I'm, like I said, David didn't want to die. But he promised his family, and he... He sacrificed himself. I didn't even second life, so he got stuck in a line. He literally risked his life again to keep a promise to this family. Like, bless his heart, his wife's heart. Like, I definitely thought this was K, like in a cave, but it does say scuba, scuba diving, cave diving. But recipes that David Shaw, you guys let me know get down in the comments your opinions. How do you guys feel about the story? Um, definitely was chilled on this one. We just relaxed to it and vibe to it. So any more um, videos you guys want me to do and just vibe to it and listen to the story. You guys let me know the links down in the comments. Definitely we get to them. Thank you guys for exploring with me. Seeing it through your favorite homegirl's eyes. Let's go. Mm -hmm.